corner, Henry Armstrong. He was a human piston. I never saw a better small man, and I never expect to. They don't make them like Armstrong anymore. This was the smile of a survivor. Born Henry Jackson, 1912. His start, a meager sharecropper's patch in Mississippi. Later, half the family went north to the harsh south side of St. Louis. Somehow he thrived at 16, making $20 weekly with the Missouri Pacific Railroad. Writer and friend, Bob Burns. He's working out on the railroad one day and a newspaper hits him in the foot and he picks it up. Kid Chocolate wins fight, gets $70,000. Henry said, that made it for me. I could work for 180 years and I wouldn't make $70,000 working for the railroad. He had made up his mind and he hoboed to the West Coast and that's when it all started. In California, as Melody Jackson, he was first an amateur fighting for meal money, forced into fixed bouts, at least 150 such fights, until 1931, his official pro debut. Now using his trainer's last name, Armstrong, the world would see that defense meant nothing to this featherweight, dubbed perpetual motion. Boxing historian, Hank Kaplan. He never stopped throwing punches, from the opening bell to the final bell. All he would do is look down at his opponent's feet, follow his feet, and somehow, by some instinct, would be able to tell when, when his opponent was throwing a punch and use the proper defensive action against that punch. Armstrong was the first major black fighter to become a headliner at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, the Madison Square Garden of the West Coast. Then two Movieland celebrities boosted his career. Al Jolson and George Raft buying his contract for $10,000. Boxing historian Bert Sugar. In 1937, he wins his first championship against Petey Sarin. But there's also a man who's eclipsing him, and that man is Joe Lewis. So Jolson and Raft decide he's going to win three championships and hold them all at once. He wins his second championship by leapfrogging over the lightweight title to win the welterweight title from Barney Ross. He now drops back to 135 to fight for the lightweight title against Lou Ambrose. And it's a brutal fight. And he winds up swallowing his own blood for the last six rounds so the referee won't stop the fight and he wins his third title and is holding all three at one time. In just 10 months, he became the first and last fighter to simultaneously hold titles in three weight classes. There were only eight divisions at the time and Armstrong owned almost half. But the boxer who wouldn't quit was also a man who didn't know when to say when. Spending, drinking, he was a Hollywood playboy, burning money as if it was firewood, chasing every pretty face. Henry's daughter, Edna Nashville. He used to go around with uh, Lena Horne. He used to date Dorothy Dandridge. When Ava Gardner and Frank Sinatra got married, he gave Ava Gardner away. He's a pretty snappy-looking little fellow. Who is he? Are you ready, Henry? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Hank. Hello, Billy. Now listen to me carefully. Even the most celebrated entertainer in Paris was not beyond his grasp. Somebody introduced him to Josephine Baker. Well, he and Josephine had quite a life for about six weeks. Because that's all he thought about was dressing, booze, and women. That's what it was all about. I've got to map out my own life. Your own life? What do you mean, Henry? A man should do the things he's best fitted for, darling. And after all, I think I'm best fitted for this. Armstrong even tried taking a fourth division title, the middleweight crown. 14 pounds lighter than Seferino Garcia, he outboxed him anyway. But the referee allegedly paid off, called it a draw, and then suspiciously fled from the ring. In 1945, with 95 knockouts, 145 victories, he retired. A model boxer, he was not a model for living. Of the million he had earned, nothing was left. After he stopped fighting, he just went down, down, down. But he accepted it. Bert Sugar. Yes, there was a fall from grace, but it was less a fall from grace as a triple champion than a fall from grace as a man. 
uh, when somebody ultimately found him and brought him back to St. Louis out of the skid rows of L.A. He once again emerged as a uh, great hero. Devoting time to the boys club, becoming a Baptist minister, the Reverend Henry Armstrong, he had been saved. But after this rebirth, there was the loss of his wife, Willa May, Bob Burns. About two o'clock in the morning, she's had a heart attack at home, and Henry is driving as fast as he can to the hospital. In about eight blocks from the hospital, she said, stop the car, Henry. We're not going to make it. Just put your arms around me. And that's the way she died, in his arms, on Taylor Avenue. Armstrong remarried, abruptly moved back to California, and withdrew from life. His last days went unnoticed. He was dying of six different diseases. He was blind. Uh, he was in total poverty when he died, and I thought that was terrible. Armstrong died in 1988, age 76. Bert Sugar. He was a man at the end who was trying to give it all back to society. And I don't think society really dealt well with him. Sometimes it's not a give and take proposition. Sometimes a take and take. And I always got that impression with Henry Armstrong. That he gave his all in the ring, and he took it on the chin in life 